Okay, today we're going to be um, working on the topic 13 additional problems. So the first one says exponential decay. Given that a quantity qt is exhibiting exponential decay and is described by the function q of t equals 2000 e to the negative 0.6 t, where t is measured in years, answer the following questions. What is the decay constant? Well, we know that, um, Okay, we know that Q of a quantity equals the initial quantity multiply by the exponential. Um, and since this is exponential to k, it's minus k t. So therefore, if we look at this expression, the k is the decay constant, and it is equal to 0 0.06. That's our answer to a. The next one is, what quantity is present initially? Again, um, if we are familiar with the structure of these exponential decay equations, we know that the Q0 is our initial quantity. So here we can say that the answer to question B is 2000. And then when we go on to question C, we want to complete the following table of values. So for um, table I'm going to go ahead and do it vertically over here. So we're going to have the amount, the amount of time is zero. And remember, this is measured in years. So when we put this into our equation, at time zero, I know that I get 2,000. Sorry about that. Um, e raised to the negative k times zero. Well, that's just going to be 2,000. All right, the next one is 5. So it's going to be the same equation. It's going to be 2,000 So if we're going to put in 5, we get 5e, and then we're going to do 2,000. e to the negative 0 0.06 times 5. We put that in our calculator, and what we get for that So the way, the order in which I need to put it in my calculator is 0.06 times 5 um, and I have to put a negative in there so I get that and then I take the exponential of that and I multiply that by 2000 and I get that this comes out to be um, 1482 approximately. Okay, so when I go on to 10, the 2,000 is the same, um, and the e to the negative 0 0.06 is the same, but the time now is 10. So when I put that in my calculator, um, it's going to be um, 
0.06 times 10, and the exponential of that times 2,000, our initial quantity. And now I've dropped down to 1,097. 98 if I round. The next number I need to include is 20. And when I put that in, I get 2,000 times e to the negative 0.06 times 20. So let me separate this out. It's getting crowded. Um, and what I get from this is 602. So we can already see that in 20 years, we've gone from an initial quantity of um, whatever this is. We're not really told what it is, but it's decaying exponentially. And we see that in 20 years, we're already from 2,000, we went to 602. So at 100, in year, 100 years, where are we? And I'm going to plug everything in the same, except that now um, it is going to be for 100. So it's going to be um, 0.06 times 100, which is our time, and um, with a and multiply that by negative one, and taking the exponential of that times the 2,000, and that comes out to 4.2. And that comes out to 4.96. The next question is the growth of bacteria. So here the growth rate of the bacterium Escherichia coli. I always just call it E. coli. A common bacterium found in the human intestine is proportional to its size. Under ideal laboratory conditions, when this bacterium is grown in a nutrient broth medium, the number of cells in a culture doubles approximately every 20 minutes. So if the initial cell population is 100, determine the function QT that expresses the exponential growth of the number of cells of this bacterium as a function of time. Okay, so what we're told is that the initial quantity is 100, and we're told um, that we want to find the function q of t that expresses this growth um, as a function of time. And we're told, furthermore, if we read through this, that um, this bacteria doubles its size, doubles its population in 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and express our um, quantity in minutes, which we're told to do. So we're going to have double what we started with, or double 100, when we have some rate constant, which we don't know, times 20. So once we um, set up our initial situation that at 20 minutes we know we have double that initial quantity. Now we just proceed um, solving this using um, the laws of logarithms and some algebra. So first of all we have Q naught on both sides so we can divide both sides by Q naught and eliminate that. And then we have 2e to the 20k. So let's just rewrite that. 2 is equal to e to the k e to the 20k. And now we can take the natural log of both sides. So we'll take the natural log of 2 and the natural log of e to the 20, e raised to the 20k. So by the laws of logarithm, this 20k can come down in front. So we're going to do that. So we're left with the log of, natural log of 2 
equals 20k times the natural log of e. And the natural log of e is a hidden form of 1. So now we have 20k, and we really want to solve for k, so we're going to solve, divide both sides by 20. And now we have a, fun, a formula for what k is and a way to arrive at it. So k is going to be approximately the natural log of 2 divided by 20. So in your calculator, see if you can get that this comes out to approximately 0 0.035. And the next question is, how long will it take for a colony of 100 cells to increase to a population of 1 million? So in this question, we're going to use the results from part A because we have to know specifically for this um, particular type of bacteria that the growth rate is 0.035, the growth constant. And so therefore, if we want to use, we're going to use that in our quantity equation. So we know that the quantity at time t is equal to our initial quantity, which is going to be 100, e raised to the 0 0.035, and times t, which is in minutes. And so what we now have been asked to do is find the time. So we're going to be actually solving for time. And that means everything else must be given to us. Well, we have the initial quantity. We have our rate constant. What we don't have is the left side set up yet. But we are told what we want it to be. We want it to be a million. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we have a million. Those are commas. And that equals 100 e to the 0 0.035 t. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide a million by 100 because we're going to get rid of the 100. OK. So if you remember, that eliminates two zeros, and we are left with a 1 followed by four zeros, which is 10,000. So we have that 10,000 is equal to e to the 0 0.035 t. And so now we are going to take the log of both sides here. So we take the log of both sides because we need to solve for a variable that's up here in the exponent. So we want to take advantage of the, law, the laws of logarithms that allow us to bring an exponent down in front when we take the logs. So on the right-hand side, we're going to bring this whole thing down, and that's exactly what's going to help us solve this. because we have 0.035 times t times the natural log of e, which is that hidden form of 1. And on the right, we have the natural log of 10,000. I'm just going to write 10k, because this is not the best, uh, easiest way to write on here. Anyway, so now we just have to divide both sides by 0.035. Let's see if I can add a little space in here. So now we are going to get from this the um, point oh three five. 
And so here we can just say that the time will be given as natural log of 10,000 divided by 0 0.035. And we find that that equals Two hundred and approximately two hundred and sixty three minutes. And that's equal to, we divide that by sixty, four point three nine, four point three nine hours. So in less than five hours, we go from having an initial quantity of 100 up to a million of these bacteria. Okay. So for number three, we're looking at Garland Mills that purchased a certain piece of machinery three years ago for 500,000. Its present resale value is 320,000. Assuming that the machine's resale value decreases exponentially, what well, will it be four years from now? Okay. So what we know is that if you imagine that time started at three years ago, so then we know that Q0 was equal to 500,000. And that now at T equals three, our quantity or our value is gonna equal 320,000. Assume that the machine's resale value decreases exponentially. So before we even answer this part about what will it be in four years, we first need to get ourselves an equation for the, for the price, which is given by a, um, an exponential decay formula because it's decreasing exponentially. So we're gonna use that to figure out what our formula is. So we know that QT is equal to 500,000 our initial quantity, E raised to some negative K times T. What we're missing in our formula to be able to answer the question is the K. So first we need, that's the only parameter. The T is a variable. You have to understand the difference between a variable and a parameter. The parameter is stays the same for this particular problem. T can vary. So what we need to do is use the information they gave us to solve for K. So the information that we were given is that T equals three, at T equals three, which is three years after the initial price, we've dropped to 320,000. So let's put that into this equation and solve for T. So, excuse me, we're gonna solve for the K that we need. So we're gonna put the 320,000 is equal to the 500,000 e to the negative k times three. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and apply all the rules that we know in the algebra and solve. So the first thing we're gonna do is divide both sides by the 500,000. And then um, on the right side, that's gonna end up leaving us e to the negative, and I'm gonna say 3k. Okay, on the left-hand side, 320,000 divided by 50,000 is going to be um, 0.64. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the natural log of both sides because we need to solve for the K that's in the numerator. So we take the natural, whoop. 
we take the natural log of 0.064 and we're going to take the natural log of e raised to the negative 3k. So now we can no longer, um, well actually, on this side, we know that we can bring this negative 3k down in front. So this is negative 3k times the natural log of e, and that's just 1. So now we have negative 3k equals a natural log of 0.64. So I can divide both sides by negative 3. And from this, I can see that my k is going to equal to the natural log of 0 0.64 all divided by negative 3. And that's approximately equal to 0 0.149. Therefore, now that we have our k, we can go back to our formula and here we can say, so I'm just pulling it out so we can see it, equals 500,000 e to the negative 0 0.149 times t. And this is our function that we can now use to answer questions. So the question we're asked is what is the value of this piece of machinery four years from now? Well, four years from now, and now, now was three years after we purchased the price. So remember we set, it's important to set t equals zero um, clearly. So we set t equals zero as the time three years from in the past from now. So you, four years from now, that is a little bit tricky, but the idea is that this is t equals seven. So it's starting from three years in the past to now is three, and going four years into the future is three plus four, or seven. So if we want to figure out the quantity, excuse me, we're saying quantity, but it's actually an exponential decay in which we're using the formula uh, for exponential decay and it's actually going to give us a value. So here we're going to say it's 500,000 e raised to the ne negative 0.149 times 7. So we look at that. And we take the exponential of that and we multiply that by 500,000. This comes out to approximately 100 and 76,198 dollars. So that value um, of this piece of machinery will continue to depreciate exponentially until four years from now it will be have this value. Okay, the next question talks about the spread of an epidemic, which is something we've been thinking a lot about. So during a flu epidemic, the number of children in the Woodbridge Community School System who contracted influenza after T days was given by this logistic growth curve. How many children were stricken by the flu after the first day? So when we think about after the first day, that's all. That's asking not the initial amount, but after day one. Okay, so the so part A, so for A, we want to just solve this for t equals one. So putting that into our formula, so q of one 
is 1,000. Remember that numerator in this kind of formula is the carrying capacity of 1 plus 199e to the negative 0.8 times 1. Negative 0.8 times 1 is just negative 0.8. So now this just becomes uh, exercise in putting this in our calculator. So 1,000 divided by, and I'm going to do an open parentheses, 1 plus 199 times, and I'm going to put 0.8 negative and then hit exponential, and I do the close parentheses and I say equal, and I get that this comes out to 11.06. Five, nine. So we'll say roughly 11 students, 11 children. So part B is how many will have the flu after 10 days. So let's see what happens when we evaluate the same function at 10. So we've been plugging into fu functions all along. This one's just a little weird looking. So we're going to go to negative 0.8 times 10. That's a 0.8, and we're going to multiply that by 10. And so from here, we're going to get 1,000 divided by, open parentheses, 1 plus 199 times and it's going to be another open parentheses, 0.8 times 10 times, and hit the little negative 1 symbol because we have to have a negative in there, and then we're going to take the exponential of that, and then we're going to close the parentheses, and then we set equal. Um, this comes out to about 337 students, children. Okay, the next question, population growth in the 21st century. The U.S. population is approximated by this function. P of T equals 612.5 divided by 1 plus 4.02 e to the point, negative 0.05 T, where P of T is measured in millions of people and T is measured in 30-year intervals. With T equals 0 corresponding to 1930. So let's write this down. T equals 0 is equal to 1930. What is the expected population of the United States in 2020? So in 2020, that's going to correspond to from 1930 to 2020, we're talking how many 30-year intervals? Well, we go to 60, 90, 20, so t equals 3. And they actually tell us that. So we're going to plug into this formula to determine the population in the estimated population by this model in 2020. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So we want the population at t equals 3, because 3 represents 30 years. So we're going to put that into this equation of 616.5 divided by 1 plus, 1 plus, sorry, I lost my stylus. That's why I'm using my finger, and this is hard to do neatly, minus 0 0.05 times three. So let's go ahead and see if we can put this in our calculator. So again, 616.5, and we're going to divide, oops, 616.5, we're going to divide that by 1 plus 4.02 and you can do another open parentheses as long as you keep track. And this time it's point, 0 0.5. So there was actually a period there. It 
is 0 0.5. into our calculator, I get that this comes out to um, 300 and I plug this into my calculator, I get that this comes out to 325, um, approximately 325 million people. The last problem is population growth in the 21st century. Um, oh, we got the same problem in here twice. Okay, well, I guess we're done then.